The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Ken Napsock, and we are here for a very special Power of the Light Side episode. Joseph, as people know, uh, the uh, pop culture punditry landscape is in a little bit of a quandary uh, with the SAG after a WJ strike going on strong. We explain a lot of uh, what's going on with us on the news episodes this week. Go check it out. Uh, but we still want to celebrate Star Wars and what it means to us. That is right. And we were really looking at what can we do to celebrate Star Wars while also still living in the murky ambiguity of the letter of the guideline from SAG-AFTRA, but also the spirit of uh, the guideline from SAG-AFTRA. I literally stared in the mirror this morning, Ken, and said, who are we? What are we? What, what, as broadcasters, what are our nouns? And this is something that we didn't get to talk about on, on the new show. And I think that's one of the things that I love about what we do on Four Center. And I think what a lot of people do is we don't fit into a neat box. Uh, mm-hmm. We absolutely do reviews. We, we are, we say things that, uh, that we aren't sure about or bothered us or we don't like. Uh, when we deeply analytically review things, uh, we are influencers, promoters, not in that we're getting paid uh by lucasfilm but we encourage people to watch book of boba fett multiple times hmm. uh and appreciate the rancor and the lorth appeal watermonger and the meanings uh we just talk as fans we hmm. we try to be funny and we're working as comedians and entertainers by doing this we, we are so many different things that it's hard to really figure out uh uh what what is what we should be following what we're being asked to follow and what uh, our hearts and our souls and our, and our support of the unions uh, make us want to follow, you know? Yeah, and uh, as, as people who work with these unions or in Jen Landis' case are in the, the union right now, um, it, it makes it, uh, you know, makes it important for us to find the right ways for it. And we appreciate all your support. We appreciate a lot of people saying, hey, but hey, but this guy said this on the Internet and, and that, that's, that's a good choice for them or that channel. Um, it's, it's kind of an individual basis here. The spirit of law, like you talk about, Joseph, is uh, what what we kind of want to, uh, understand in our hearts is what I'll say. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I think for people who, uh, maybe don't have the whole stew of nouns that we do, but people who just, they work for a site or a magazine and they're a reviewer, period. And they don't go around saying, I'm a fan, but also a reviewer. And they're just reviewers and they're just writing a review. That to me gives it this this clarity. Mm-hmm. But it, I think it, looking in my heart and in the mirror, uh, we're fans. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not paid, but we promote. We encourage people mm-hmm. to, to watch stuff. So uh, that I think is, is what I'm still wrestling with. And while we're wrestling with it, I feel okay promoting uh, the soul of Star Wars uh, that, it, in my opinion, can can only be owned <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, by George Lucas creators, you know, and uh, and uh, what all connects us through the force of Star Wars is mm-hmm. the the soul of it. So you had this great uh, suggestion of while while we're trying to figure out the specifics of uh, okay, probably shouldn't promote new work from a struck company, but what about old work? from a struck company while we're still trying to figure that out we can celebrate the soul of star wars and we already have a great way to do that uh if people have been listening to our cues of the force episodes uh we've been doing this thing where we ask for submissions from uh, patrons for a power of the light side uh submission and that's been a segment at the end of our cues show for a while now and what this came from is uh you know, a couple of years ago, and I, I think still now, but a couple of years ago in particular, a, a lot of people in the in the Star Wars community felt like uh, the the negative voices aren't necessarily m- uh, more, but they're sure drown drowning out the joy. Yeah. And we just wanted to have a space to to let the light side <laughs> emerge mm-hmm. and just ask people to to share something about Star Wars that they love. Could be a scene, could be a moment, could be a way it, a specific way it touched their lives. And we've got all sorts of different kinds of submissions and we pulled two today and uh and they're very different from one another which just shows uh, all the different ways that star wars affects our lives you have any general thoughts on the uh, concept of the power of the light side segment 
I think it's why we are here as, as, as uh, you, uh, me and Jennifer over the years, uh, it, it, it's, uh, part of our, our branding, you know, celebrating star Wars, uh, the center of the galaxy, all that stuff we've, we've had, uh, this is what draws us to it. And even though it's changed for me, how I, how I talk about Star Wars, how I engage with it has changed over the years. It's grown, it's gotten deeper, uh, following your path down to the, the, the themes. But at the end of the day, right, it's like, what, what does this make us feel? What do you, what do you think about Star Wars in, in your real life? How does it find you? That's why we do some of that stuff. Um, and even, even when I work other jobs in this town, the digital media world, world and, I, and I'm in pitch meetings and, and people are putting Easter egg videos out because those are going to get the big hits and they're, they're taking shots at Star Wars or, or, or you know, Episode 9 or Book of Boba Fett. I always just want to go time out. I understand that, that critique, but what does it make you feel? What does it? What, what does Dial of Destiny even make you feel to, to jump over to like the Indiana Jones fan? Because that's why we're here. How it affects you and how it makes you feel. And and, and the power of the light side is is um, is is exactly what you said. It, it is a chance to hear the voices that sometimes might be a little softer because they're off off in the corner just enjoying something. <laughs> <laughs> they're not angry in a car screaming about it. And uh, uh, I think I love these stories because they go so many different places and they're personal stories for the people that's in them. Yeah, yeah, and we learn about all the different ways that Star Wars affects people's lives, and sometimes it's a really similar and universal, but sometimes it's that, that specific through the universal. If I don't have that specific experience, but that feeling that it led to, oh, that's so familiar. And I think that's really beautiful about these as well. All right. Uh, are you ready, Ken? I am ready. Okay, so our first Power of the Light Side segment uh, comes from listener, uh, patron, a Star Wars fan, Anakin Crespin, and as we have confirmed, Anakin is his actual name, which yes. is very cool. So here's what Anakin has to say. Hello, friends. As one of my favorite characters, I thought what they did with Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi was perfect in a way and definitely very epic, despite being torn about him dying so soon in the story. I always connected to him in that movie because years ago, I was a very different person. A lot like young Luke Skywalker, actually, but had been sort of changed by years of depression and traumatic events. Yet I'm still that hopeful kid deep down inside, you know? For that reason, The Last Jedi has always been so validating and inspiring to me, but more recently I have grown an even greater appreciation for Luke's story arc. Late 2019, I had just beaten an addiction that I'd battled for years and made the decision to start saving for music equipment to pick back up on my dream of making music for a living. But soon COVID hit, financial struggles ensued, and a few years later, I realized that two or three more years of my life had gone by like that, and I had nothing to show for it. I had neglected my hopes and dreams yet again, it, even if I still had it in me, I have so much anxiety. I'm much less confident and outgoing than I used to be. Could I even perform in front of people like I did when I was younger and dreamed of doing for the rest of my life? Would I even want to? Was, uh, was this all my life was going to be now? I'm only 28 years old, but was definitely having a bit of a midlife crisis. Now, please bear with me as I take it back to Luke Skywalker for a moment. With the announcement of the new Jedi Order movie back in April, I started having thoughts about what maybe could have been, how amazing it would have been if the great Luke Skywalker had survived the sequel trilogy and gone on to rebuild the new Jedi Order that would last for generations to come, like in Legends. Mostly so we could see him go on to save the galaxy again and have a few more adventures instead of only getting to see him in action again in The Last Jedi. But in thinking about Luke's legacy, I remembered a conversation he had with a Jedi of the High Republic made possible by a weird mushroom force plant in the current comic <laughs> series. <laughs> Luke explains that he's having a hard time trying to become a Jedi and live up to what the Jedi are supposed to be and that he's doing it all alone. The Jedi then tells Luke that the Order tends to be what it needs to be for any particular time. That sometimes they govern or are warriors, teachers, or explorers. That sometimes we do all of those things, and sometimes we are carved down to nothing. Those who are left must bear the responsibility of being one last bit of light in a galaxy filled with endless dark. And I realized how incredible Luke's legacy as a Jedi truly is, and about all the good he did for the galaxy and the Order in his lifetime. I'm sure his life didn't turn out the way he wanted it to or thought it would either, and he left the fight, but in the end, he saved Leia, the Resistance, and preserved the Jedi Order yet again because he still chose to project himself to Crate. He still felt peace and purpose. 
So I've chosen once again to dream and make music. And if it ever goes somewhere, awesome. If I ever get there and uh, decide I don't want to be a performer anymore, that's okay too. And if I never even make it, at least I will have tried. Since music makes me feel the same way that Star Wars does, it will have been a good life just doing what I love. For me, that's the power of the light side. Just follow your heart and keep your mind on crate. It's never too late. Mm. That is beautiful. Mm. Ken, uh, after you wipe away a tear, what are your thoughts? I have a lot of different thoughts on this, Anakin. It's 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 wonderful because um, this is also to me about being about being who you are or or who you want to be, it, not in the sense of of a profession, but just like um, to me, Luke connected to who he is, right, and, and did some actions based around it um, that I think were outside the title of Jedi, the Last Jedi, or warrior, uh, priest, monk, teacher, explorer, all those things that you talk about here in, in a wonderful way. Luke did what 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 Luke uh, needed to do for himself. And, 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 and there's something in there too, but uh, even hearing your, your, your struggle, Anakin with like uh, career stuff and I have this dream and I connected to it. Then I kind of walked away from it. Um, back when I was a baseball coach, we had, uh, uh, one of the kids was just 10 years old and playing at an 18 year old level, right? He, he just had all the skills in the world and he was a time of kind of a team leader. And in that regard on the field, but off the field, he was also a great kid. It's some wonderful parents. And I remember I, used, I, at the end of the season, I sent letters to all my uh, kids. You know, it was 1998, um, so I couldn't email them uh, as much. Uh, so handwritten letters. <laughs> Thank you. Here's, here's your season stats. Here's what you did. I, I told this kid, Andrew, I said, the thing I, I, I'm really confident in you is uh, you have a lot of skills and you might go on to play in Major League Baseball. But that is most likely a, a hard road that might not happen for many different reasons. But what I love is... Um, you have a great future no matter what you are because uh, no matter what you do because of who you are and you're connecting to that and you got to find that and you sometimes lose that along the way. And I think Luke lost that along the way because that's so real because that's what happened. Uh, I don't want to get too dark. I'll put a little bit of a, of a, of a warning for you. Um, you know, I, I, I was really depressed a, a, a lot. I battle it still do still do, but really early 2002 was really bad. A lot of it with career stuff. Um, I did have, um, like like a suicidal incident in 2003 and that was bad and I went and I recovered and I worked recovered and I felt so good and the rest of that year I was like I'm on the road again and then in 2004 I I, I tried again and that hurt worse not because I, I, I you know not because of what I was feeling but because I found myself back where I was and that seemed so overwhelming that mm -hmm. seemed so like how could this happen again and so I think of you know I don't mean to trivialize it by looking at Luke uh, in fact I'm the other way right I had a lot of power to the story of Luke and last Jedi of I conquered this I threw down my lightsaber I uh, my lightsaber I helped redeem my father we, we, we won the galaxy things happen and now here I am again with the blade ignited for even a second over my nephew how did I get here again God that sucks God that who am I I'm disconnected from myself and, all, and it can it can be crushing and that's part of the story that I think it's um Debated in a really surface level of uh, mm -hmm. you know, Luke up, even J Ryan Johnson back in the day saying, you know, he didn't up his skill level like a video game. And that's just where you stay. It's not real. So anyways, all that to say, and I don't, I don't mean to get dark, and, you know, and deep, but, but Anakin, I feel what you're saying there too, but it's about finding yourself no matter what you're going to do going forward, reconnecting and doing what's right for you. And that often, by the way, connects with what's right for others. Um, so powerful stuff there. And I absolutely want to hear your music. <laughs> yeah, Ken, I don't I don't think uh I don't think you're being too dark or deep obviously. Uh th that that level of uh depression and that level of frustration in, in darkness it is of course dark, but I think that's what Anakin is talking about and that's what what Luke is about and in in what Luke is about in the last Jedi is that that's what the light is 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 bringing you back from the darkness when it is really 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 hard to step away from the darkness yeah when you have every reason to say um i, I slipped so that's that's who i am i'm a person who's just going to keep slipping back toward uh negative thoughts i'm a person who is going to uh slip back towards not pursuing the dreams i'm a person who is going to uh think for one second i can i can stop mm -hmm. the the horror of the dark side the easy way with, with with a quick lightsaber stroke just for a second just for a second and he was in a, in a world he never would have done it it was just mm -hmm. you know a flash um 
a, a fleeting shadow, uh, as they say in, in the movie. And that that's so much what the light side is about. It's the light side is not about like uh, <laughs> toxic positivity of like mm-hmm. never bring up anything dark, only cookies and bunnies. <laughs> that's you know, yeah. <laughs> that mm-hmm. only cookies and bunnies is not the power of the light side. <laughs> the power of the light side is is. Mm -hmm. Uh, acknowledging that life is very difficult and striving toward uh, what makes us feel peace, purpose, uh, joy, whole connection. Um, I I think it, it it presents itself in lots of different ways. Everything from the very, you know, uh, I heroically sacrifice for someone else. I, Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, super Zen and I can meditate, you know, on a subway, like, (laughs) you know, but it's also what Anakin's talking about of, and I think the way it, it hits me in metaphors about the force hit me the most is uh, because of the kind of life that, that I've led and I know you have too. And, and, and Anakin is leading is um, expressing yourself through art. It, it's this, this capturing of, of something that maybe science can explain, but to me it is those more than the sum of our parts moments, how, how science can explain how, how notes work. And, but the idea that, that, you're playing music or you're reading an audience doing comedy or, or a stage show. And, and, and you reach this moment of sort of transcendence where I understand all the parts of this, but somehow it is this sort of magical expression of who I want to be, who I am, something that can't be entirely captured in words. And you feel like you are being yourself and honest to yourself. Mm. And, that is one of the things that to me feels like the light side. And, and when you're falling to the dark side, how do you get, how do you get back to that? Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lot of, of Luke's journey is in the last Jedi is he has lots of um, rational reasons. He, he slipped up, you know, he, he, wow. he let, even before that lightsaber moment, snow, he, he says snow could already turned his heart. So, yeah, you know, we don't know the details of how all that happened. But, you know, he slipped up. He didn't protect his his nephew the way he needed to. Leia sent him to him in the first place to to try to get him balanced. And Luke did his his best. Uh, and he has these rational reasons to be concerned, rational reasons to critique mistakes the Jedi have made over the years. But I think his journey in The Last Jedi is to be like, yeah, but at the same time, y- you're just scared to try again. And that's what he tells Ray and Rise of Skywalker. It was fear that kept me on this island. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it was it was fear of what if I reach for the light again and it doesn't work? What if I slip? What mm-hmm. if it doesn't work to reach for the light? And it does. It it, in, it saves Leia. It saves the resistance, as Anakin is saying. Uh, crucially to the story of the Jedi, it, it inspires the galaxy, but it also inspires Ray. It, it shows mm-hmm. her. You were right. Some even when it's really difficult, even when it feels like a small act, the light needs to push back against the dark. Yeah, one of my favorite things you said in that, and I just said a bunch of wonderful things. Um, but the idea that in those moments, um, those dark moments, that you can be convinced that that's who you really are, right? And mm-hmm. and, and and the struggle is always to 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 because it's also easier too. But I, by the way, you know, when it comes to depression or any kind of mental health issues, seek the right help, seek the support. And, and sometimes that might be medicine. That might be other, uh, other things beyond just talking to someone. There's a lot of ways to deal with it. So I want to make that clear with, before I say something like, like, um, like this, it's not just, you don't simply just choose to be happy. Um, but there is, uh, it, it is about realizing in that moment, you're, you're telling yourself and it's a little easier to be like, well, I'm a dark failure. I'm, a, I'm in the darkness. I'm a failure. Uh, that can be that could be it's quicker more seductive and 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 takes uh less work than yeah, i'm going to wake up today and i actively have to decide what is what is good in my life and what is there and it, and it, you know like i said I'm, I'm trying to be careful about saying that i don't want to suggest that you just like you said bunnies and cookies <laughs> and <you're okay. laughs> but it's in those moments so luke puts up the blade well i guess this is who i really am and you could stop there and and live in that moment and believe it but it's a lie. And that's why the, I think it's powerful that Luke connects to who he is as a Jedi and just who he is in this story. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just love that you said that. I think it's, it's just, it, it could be real easy to convince yourself. Oh, I am a pile of crap, you know, which is yep. what, what Ken tells himself every day, every day when he wakes up <laughs> and I got to work through it every day. Yeah. 
No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I have a lot of, uh, of negative voices that, uh, I need to, to continue to work on. And again, yeah, not to just be all bunnies and cookies, but to like, let the pain and the sadness hit of mistakes you made or, uh, things that didn't turn out the way you wanted them to. And to just sometimes just let that hit and then say, it's okay that that hit me, but I'm not going to stay there. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, uh, finding all sorts of different ways and, and tools and resources to, to help yourself not just stay there. Um, I, in Anakin, Anakin's talking about the way all of this ties into, um, for him, a, a pursuit of art. And we, we end up talking about it that a lot because it's, it's our life experience mm -hmm. on the podcast, but, but I think it extends to no matter, no matter who you wanted to be, you know, if you, mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to be a, a, a world-class competitive, uh, <laughs> fisher, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it doesn't matter. It's that sort of, it's that vision of this is not just the career I wanted to have, or I wanted to have a house and 2.5 kids. To me, whatever your life goal was, it's about that. Mm -hmm. This is what felt like uh, it would make me feel like I am who I am. Yeah. It, it, and it not necessarily, we, we get that tied up into the, in the, um, the competition of success. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think Anakin saying some really smart things about if you make an effort to pursue whatever it is that makes you feel like you are you, that you have peace and purpose, maybe it'll lead toward the, you know, the level of success or accomplishment that, that will really make you feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But hopefully if you're just doing a thing that you love, there is fulfillment from from that and and that's something that i it's part of the reason i'm working on these these short films is is uh you know I, i've been out here pitching and i've had some close calls mm -hmm. and i really just got to the point of like i need to make things because that's mm -hmm. that's when i feel like i am who i i am and, and who i i promised myself to be when i was young i didn't promise myself to be successful i promised myself to, to be an artist and to feel mm -hmm. that glow that i feel when i create things and when I work with other people to create things. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to work hard to get back to that. Yeah. No, that's powerful stuff there too. And we, it's easy to slide away from it. I think um, in, in the last few years, I've had a little bit more, um, well, actually I, I'll say yeah, I have a little bit more success in stand up, not because I've unlocked some formula because I finally, after all these years was like, who am I on stage? Cause for years mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, I, I need to be a comic need to be a comedian. And um, even though I've had some funny bits and moments and everything over my, over my life, I, I, at the end of the day, I, it, I was it myself on stage. What, what, what mm. story am I trying to tell? That's why I got into this. That's why I left town, uh, my hometown to go find out, uh, you know, what stories I wanted to tell. And I think it's easy. I, I like what you say there about, you know, um, that's, that's the thing you and I talk about a lot about, you know, our, th our thoughts on um, competition and how mm -hmm. I've, I've come to the point of someone who, who's who's a fan of sports realizing that I think the the competition is 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 the refiner's fire to make you a better person, and that got cast aside for the result, the win, and the focus mm -hmm. is on the win, which is something I know that's, that's uh, important to your heart of, of of saying, hey, why are we all why are we all trying to win at the cost of everything? Uh, mm -hmm. Isn't it about being a better version of ourselves? Um, and I, I, I had to take it back to Star Wars. I think that's a lot of stuff. What what but might have been that play with Luke too as well. But anyways, we're going all over the map as we should with this conversation. <laughs> this stuff makes me feel, you know, and, and now, yeah. And trying to find out who am I, who am I beyond the titles? Who am I? And so that, for, there, there, the, that way I, I carry myself into every situation or every job or every stage uh, and reconnecting to that self. Yeah. And, and I, I love that we keep coming back to this, this question of find pushing through the darkness and finding your way back to the light by asking, who are you? Mm -hmm. um, I have a quote at the top of my, um, my, my notes app on my phone. I have a general sort of a to do mm -hmm. uh, thing with all, all just kind of like, what are life notes? Um, my wife got me started on this book series uh, that, that I, I read whenever we can kind of take a little vacation and I can just like read a, a short book in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, it's a, a series called uh, Mrs. Polifax. Um, and it is, the first book is called The Unexpected Mrs. Polifax. And it's about um, an older woman whose kids have grown up, her husband's gone and she just needs something in her life. 
she gets she gets scared of the dark place she's going because she needs something and she decides well maybe i'll try to join the cia <laughs> yeah. so it's this kind of kind of it starts from this a little bit of this comedy place of well, is it wouldn't it be funny if an old retired woman was kind of trying to be you know a, a james bond figure um but the books are are written you know by a woman with a lot of life experience about this older woman mrs polifex with all this life experience so there'll be there'll be comedy and then there'll be actual violence but then there'll be mrs polifex is always just kind of spitting these little words of wisdom <laughs> um and the most recent one i read uh is um mrs polifex in the hong kong buddha and there was a quote uh, a a a thing that she said to a younger person who was beating themselves up for all the issues we we're talking about that they wanted to be on this life path and then 10 years ago they made this horrible decision and they they just they mad at themselves and they regret it and what are they going to do uh and mrs paul Fax says we all betray ourselves from time to time or how else would we find out what ourselves are mm. and it, it just really helped me to to uh, honestly to, to go through the journey that that luke does in the last jedi with yoda saying like yeah you betrayed yourself a little bit <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> You made a mistake, and 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 it reminded you who who you are, who you want to be, mm-hmm. and to accept that as a part of the journey of life instead of the sort of narrative I think that we're all trying to live up to of like I turned twenty one and my I I decided <laughs> my path and then I uh, yeah. ascended mountain after mountain higher and higher and like that happens to some of us sometimes yeah. maybe but really even you you dig into like mega successes like. Mm-hmm. I, I I went to a screening of of Purple Rain, uh, uh, the the film that Prince made, and and heard a bunch of stuff about how he also wanted to conquer the world of film and had failures and had to, mm-hmm. you know, and was mm-hmm. always upset about it and like yeah 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 I'm a titan of music, but I, what I really want to do is film. Like it mm-hmm. happens to all of us. Um, yeah. And I think it's it, it, it's helped me to just go okay when I make a misstep, I betrayed myself a little bit, but it will help me clarify who I want to be. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I think I need that. I'm going to paste that on a, <laughs> and I crochet that and put it on my wall. <laughs> like a, yep. <laughs> need a point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that it's an ongoing journey, uh, which is why I think, I, I think, you know, uh, when last year I came out and there was so much from that movie going on, but like w- when it was, and I still struggle with people like, Oh, that's not, that's not Luke. And I'm not making the hashtag. That's, that's not my, you know, not my Luke, whatever. I'm just, I have people are like, but that's not what he did in return of the Jedi. I'm like 30 years ago, 30 mm-hmm. years ago. You're, you're, you're you, you haven't, cha- I've known this. I've known you for 10 years and you've changed seven times. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And, 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 and part of the frustration leads back to the joy of these kind of conversations. I kind of sometimes just want you all to experience this kind of thing, whether it be Star Wars or a song or music, you know, any kind of music or a TV show. What inspires you? Art, art is art is that. So, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. And Luke's journey inspires me because he, he is he is somebody who is uh, reconnecting with who he really wants to be. And oh, it feels so good as an audience member. It feels so good for him. That look on his face of like, ah, there I am. That's who I want to be. You know, there it's I beautiful. Am. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Anakin, so much, and uh, best of luck on all your journeys. And no matter what, enjoy your music, enjoy your expression of yourself as much as uh, Luke Skywalker enjoys being a Jedi. Indeed. Indeed. Any other thoughts before we take a quick break, Ken? No, Anakin, just know yourself. David Bowie says, music is not an important part of my life. It's how I get my ideas out. It's my Mm. medium. So focus on that. Tell your stories. There you go. From Luke Skywalker to David Bowie to Mrs. Polifax. (laughs) All the quotes you need to get you through your day. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with another Power of the Light Side. Back in a moment.
And we are back. We've got another Power of the Light Side entry. But first, even though we're not doing our Q's and A's show, uh, we still have an important A to talk about, right, Ken? <laughs> we do. Uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at w- uh, www. You all know that. AudibleTrial.com slash Force Center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Uh, we have uh, Force Center recommends. It might be Mrs. Polifax. Can you get that on Audible? <laughs> I don't know. I'll look into it. <laughs> but what are we recommending today? Uh, we are recommending The Princess and the Scoundrel by Beth Revis because that is what is in my notes. Uh, but we should also recommend, because there's nothing stopping us from recommending two things. No. Uh, the, the new uh, Star Wars Inquisitor Rise of the Red Blade. Mm. Uh, Ken has started this one and is very excited about it. We, we chatted a little bit about it. I haven't cracked it open yet, and I can't wait to get into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you want to give that one a listen or The Princess and the Scoundrel, which is in my notes because I just love that book, uh, you can download your free audiobook today by going to audibletrial.com slash four center. One more time, that's audibletrial.com slash four center for a free audiobook. Any other audiobook thoughts, Ken? Um, no, if, if that's a good way to help us and help your ears and your souls. <laughs> Win all. Help your ears. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have one more power of the light side. This one comes to us uh, from Lightspeed Bear. Uh, we, you know, we've asked Anakin if that if Anakin is his real first name. We have not had a chance to ask uh, Lightspeed if uh, Lightspeed is their uh, first name. It might be, and that would be awesome. Uh, here's what Lightspeed Bear has to say: Hey, Force Center, you often open your episodes asking, "How did Star Wars find you this week?" A nice little salad bar appetizer before the main course of the show. Well, in that spirit, Star Wars found me in a big way in May of 2022. Uh, About a year prior to that, I posted a live stream question to Alex and Molly from Star Wars Explained asking if they thought Celebration was worth going, going to on your own. With the caveat being that that solo trip also included a flight all the way from London. The answer was a resounding yes, and it pushed me to book tickets and my hotel. I ended up spending 10 days in L.A. and Anaheim, and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. A real spirit of adventure making my way around on my own. The convention itself, my first ever, was amazing. So many highlights. The Mando Plus panel and Mando Experience, and of course, uh, your panel with uh, Star Wars Explained, being surrounded by the light side of the fandom, watching the first two Kenobi episodes in a room full of people, to name a few. Special shout out also for Taylor Gray. I'm not normally big on autograph collecting, but as a huge Rebels fan, I went for it in this case. The man was genuinely delightful to speak to. He was open and friendly, and it made my love for the show all the stronger. After celebration, I spent a joyous couple of days at Galaxy's Edge and distinctly remember my love of Star Wars never being higher than when March of the Resistance started playing in the middle of the Rise of the Resistance ride. As a huge fan of the sequels, it moved me to tears and rounded the trip out in a wonderful way. My only negative? Someone needs to tell the catering staff at Angel Stadium to make their hot dogs bigger. My expectation of (laughs) giant-sized American dogs, sadly, crushed. Keep up the amazing work you all do. Uh, Ken, there's there's much to address. uh, uh, Specifics, (laughs) philosophy, but let's start with American wieners. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> I've never been to Angel Angel Stadium. Are the uh, are the American uh, dog wieners uh, mm-hmm. crushingly small? Uh, they're not as famous. So Dodger dogs are the famous ones, as well as Ballpark Franks in Detroit, which actually is where that brand started. It started in the stadium there. They 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 had a, a deal there. Um, so and Dodger dogs and someone out there is probably going to tweet. Dodger dogs have changed over the last kind of, over the last couple of years. They got rid of their partnership with Farmer John and some other brand, and they're a little less tasty. So uh, to 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 light to bear, uh, Angel Stadium is actually a wonderful stadium. It's got a lot of food options. It's one of the first stadiums I've ever been to where a waiter came up to me to take my order in a certain section. Uh, but you got to get up to Dodger Stadium. They fall out of the bun. You get the supersized one, and it's like twelve inches of. Uh, dog <laughs> and i had one when the last time and i'm a giant baseball fan clearly you hear me talk about stadiums and food but i've not been to a dodger game in a few years uh my um, i don't follow baseballs closely anymore for for no real reason other than just life but i did go to dodger stadium for lady gaga as did you and i made mm-hmm. sure 
to get a Dodger dog before the Gaga concert, which was a weird place to be. Like, I'm, I got to get a Dodger dog. And everyone's like, we're going we're gonna to dance to Bad Romance. What are you doing? You can't put that in you. Uh, <laughs> but I did. So anyways, Lightspeed Bear, when you come out here again, you got to go. Uh, at the Dodger Stadium, uh, and it's it's the it's it's the, perhaps the most famous dog in the sport. Yeah, <laughs> I have only been to Dodger Stadium twice: once for Lady Gaga, once for Guns and Roses, and both times for Dodger Dogs, uh, which were delightful and a, a non sadly crushing. <laughs> size. <laughs> I, I really want to go to Dodger Stadium. Summers keep getting busy. I was I was yeah, yeah. Uh, bugging Ken and another mutual friend of like. Take me out to the ball game. <laughs> I don't know where to sit at a ball game. Take me to the because yeah. I, I just want to. I, I I like baseball. Fan fine. I'm not a, a huge fan. Certainly not knowledgeable. But I I just I like I love that stadium. It feels like mm-hmm. you're in this just giant public park, which I know a stadium should feel like. But you know, uh, I grew up in Minneapolis uh, uh, when we had the Metrodome, mm-hmm. which was just a surreal, bizarre experience. Of you, mm-hmm. you look up at that dome and it 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 just shattered all your sense of what your actual height was yeah yeah <laughs> it was like a weird forced perspective shot that made you feel like you were falling when you looked up at least it did to me yep. so i love dodger stadium and i love those dogs and i would love to go back again but i've never been to angels angel stadium uh to be crushed by their small dogs <laughs> but you don't have to because you can get they got some nice sushi i had some sushi there one day uh Ooh. you know there, there's there's a lot of options. And Dodger Stadium's got a ton of options now too. That's kind of the way the way of the stadiums now across the land. But yeah, I like it. I like Angel Stadium a lot actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll get to the Star Wars of it here, but we also got to say Lightspeed Bear. I like uh, having a strange relationship with the size of a wiener. That <laughs> 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 that's that's the the American experience. The mm-hmm. the. Re- obviously like you know i'm not i'm not trying to make any any obvious jokes but like the the the, the american attitude of like uh, uh bigger louder faster is better mm-hmm. is, is an obvious thing and then it's 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 like america itself is is working through weird psychological issues to like i remember when i was a kid like they 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 did like just kind of straightforward oscar meyer hot dogs mm-hmm. kept getting smaller until then they put out the oscar meyer wieners that were like bun length actually as big as the That's bun right. and trying to sort of advertise it like it's big and powerful in america mm-hmm. it's like you shrunk the wieners <laughs> only to try to make them bigger again it's like sigmund freud is just yeah. he is spinning spinning yeah. in his grave at the just ridiculous on the nose mm-hmm. <laughs> issues mm-hmm. of this <laughs> and you're you're reminding me unrelated but related completely of turning the corner at the cereal aisle as a kid and, and being like this, this box of apple jacks is smaller and costs more mom <laughs> like, <laughs> what's going on america <laughs> oh, that's great. yeah so that, that that brought it all all crashing back anyway uh mm-hmm. welcome to dog center uh mm-hmm. let's talk about star wars the heart of what lightspeed bear is saying in his power of the light side segment is uh really pushing past uh, fear of uh, mm. traveling all by yourself to a different country and really doing a, a lot. I mean, just just a first convention would be, wow, that, that's amazing. But then to also go to Disneyland and Angel Stadium and and take the opportunity to kind of take in uh, uh, L.A. and Anaheim and, and mm. America, that's a huge amount of that sort of Star Wars idea of, other places as well but i think star wars really concentrates on it of taking your your first step or any big step out into the unknown is always scary but past mm. the fear is the wonder how do you feel about that uh, general mm. idea ken no i'm i'm um an admiration of lightspeed bear for taking this kind of trip you know uh, i'm someone who started traveling late and um I'm, i'd still get it uh, hell i was with uh, grace you and sarah getting to london and i was you you were with me i was like i don't know how this is gonna go what do we do? Where do we go? Uh, and, and you know, and you and Sarah had not only been there, had lived there. And I was like, I get it. You know, and then going to Paris was, you know, are they going to be mean to me? What's going on? I don't know. Uh, and, uh, and they weren't. It was lovely. And everyone I met in Paris was was just uh, uh, really happy to have us there and, and talk to us. So, um, yeah, it is uh, the, the the fear of it all. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I, I told the story of my podcast, The Blathering. I'll tell it quickly here. Like, I'd never been stung by a bee my entire life. And um was deathly afraid of it. Like, you know, like, ah, I do the, the bee comes by, I'd like run away that in a, in a comical way almost. And about a year ago, I got stung in the backyard 
And, and, and again, caveat, you could be allergic to bees. It could be a little bit more serious. We've all seen the, the Macaulay Culkin movie. Okay, we get it. But uh, not to talk comical about it. But, but um, mm-hmm. for me, I got stung and I pulled the stinger out and the poor bee, I, it, my fault, I bumped into him um, and nothing happened. You know what I mean? And I just remember thinking, I've been afraid of this for 46 years. 46 years <laughs> I've been afraid of this. And now I'm past it. And now, I, you know, we need to preserve bees. I love bees. I, I, you know, they're in our yard. Uh, I see them all the time. I talk to them. I love bees. And uh, anyways, it, 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 that's a little bit what this is and a little bit what's at the Star Wars Center of it all. Fear can be used against you. And I think we have ability to use it against ourselves so easily, so easily. And it's and this is uh, not fear of, uh, you know, there's bigger, deeper fears, but the fear of just like, I, this if Lightspeed Bear doesn't take this leap, he 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 doesn't get to experience any of this, right? Mm-hmm. And that's part of the journey. It's not just about what you accomplish; it's what you experience and feel. Yeah, yeah. No, I I so agree with that. I mean, I, I'm always fascinated by like the difference between the kind of fears we talk about that are like um, these deep, irrational fears holding us back, um, mm-hmm. and then there's sometimes like we need to do something that actually does have a little bit of of risk to it, and. You you can't get to the wonder without taking like a little bit of, of hey, you're alive, that's life risk. Mm-hmm. And then there's the like, you know what? I'm not going to let my fear hold me back. I'm going to walk in, onto freeway traffic. It's like, well, you, that's a con- <laughs> rational concern. <laughs> that's a good- you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Or like, I'm going to go camping. I'm really afraid of bears, but mm-hmm. I'm just going to open all these jars of honey and go to sleep in my tent. And you know what? Not let fear hold me back. Like, no, no. Mm-hmm. That's that's asking for trouble, right? And and so I think it's always fun to sort of like piece through what what level of fear are we talking about? Is it is it just like uh, I I get fear that that something will go wrong, you know? So sometimes mm. I, I get scared asking somebody to do something with me because it's just this totally irrational fear of what if it goes wrong? Well, well, it might, mm. you know. Um, and then there's the like, well, it's it's a little bit of a risk because living life is a risk. Mm. Um, on this, my recent visit to my uh to to hang out with my dad one of the things he wanted to do is uh, take a uh, bike ride mm, two and a half miles mm, up and down some, some hills um, mm. to this uh, local brewery. Oh, wow. And uh, I, I haven't been on a bike in like 12 years. And that time, 12 years ago was I, I, somebody gave us a bike and I rode it up and down the alley and I was like, nah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and, and it was probably 15 years before that, that I'd, so it had been an extremely long time. Uh, so nothing to be that scared of, but like, I, I, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't been on a bike. Um, I, you know, I mm. hadn't, you know, I, how, how is my body going to handle it? You know, mm. uh, I was wearing a helmet, but like, it's like, I could, I could fall off this thing and break my elbow and that would really put a crimp in my life, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, and, and it was great. Cause like, if only there was an analogy for exactly this based on this, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> it's Got right. it. You know, so it was, it was kind of like your example of, and I know what you're saying of like, yeah, you don't want to make light of it. There are people who are allergic to bees, but if you're not, it's, it's nowhere near as bad as, you know, yeah. you spend a lifetime going, oh my God, bees, you yeah. know, <laughs> not the bees, not the bees. And like, uh, to be stung by one bee is like, ouch. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel bad for the bees. You know. Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> to lose their life in this arrangement here, but yeah, no, uh, I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. Take the bike I, ride, kids. Take the bike ride. I didn't fall off. I didn't get stung. Mm-hmm. I got to eat some ice cream at the Dairy Queen. It was worth it all. Uh, do you have any any thoughts uh, or, or responses to the Lightspeed Bears experience, uh, specifically uh, going to uh, a Star Wars celebration in 2022, how it compared with uh, your experience or your joy there? Uh, yeah, I actually am getting uh, the nostalgia feels for that convention that seems like a lifetime ago. <laughs> that was mm-hmm. last week. Uh, London and uh, London was spectacular too for its own own reasons. But yeah, there's uh, something great about Anaheim. Um, uh, just everyone getting back out and seeing it. Um, you know, it did affect people. <laughs> there might have been, maybe we rushed out too soon. Um, but uh, I, it was yeah, there was a special kind of joy there. Uh, and, and, um, I'm glad Lightspeed Bear got to feel Glad everyone got to experience it. And just, um, you know, uh, from you and I watching Obi-Wan Kenobi in, in my hotel room, cause, uh, that ended up being kind of the best path for us to, to do a mm-hmm. training or just seeing them, 
supporting friends there. The, the lobby bars, my, my favorite hobby, going to lobby bars, all, all those kind of things. Uh, me making you and, and Brian Ward go out to a bubble gum shrimp across the street. Like, <laughs> a, lot of memories, a lot of memories. And and I'm glad you got to experience it uh, there, including the memories of Alex and Molly coming back from a rave. Alex with dripping mascara off his eyes and sweating. <laughs> and kind of yeah. Yeah, no, and we, yeah, we watched those Kenobi episodes in your hotel room, and then we we went to the hotel bar, and I think uh, people are at a different hotel bar, and I had a great time just uh, sitting there uh, drinking a martini and just enthusing uh, mm-hmm. about uh, about Kenobi together and that that Mando experience. I've seen a lot of those costumes mm-hmm. up close, but the the drummer Astro McDroid and uh, mm-hmm. taking a million pictures of that. It was a it was a they're all they're all very similar to the Star Wars celebrations that I've been to in terms of like their component parts. But each one, based on the city, based on what's going on in Star Wars, uh, it, it creates its own special, unique magic. And this is yet another great perspective, too, for for us. Like, we, we still had to get a hotel room, but it's in our backyard, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, we were at the Mando Experience on Sunday, and, you know, I was home four hours later. Mm-hmm. Um, back to regular life. Um, but for Lightspeed Bear... The, that was just the tip of the iceberg of, of mm. adventure. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think that is always what, what makes um, doing Force Center, uh, uh, sharing in, in the Star Wars journey with other people, I get so much by uh, remembering that everybody's experiencing it in a different way because we all mm. have different experiences and perspectives. Yeah. No, so true. So true. And that's what what um, so fun about Celebration is. Everyone brings those Star Wars experiences and perspectives to one fun place. You yep. Feel you feel it. Yep. And my last thought about what Lightspeed Bear is sharing here, uh, when they say, uh, my love of Star Wars never being higher than when March of Resistance started playing in the middle of the mm-hmm. Rise of the Resistance ride. Uh, you know, Galaxy's Edge has, has so many opportunities for immersion, and, and it, that is some of my favorite um, moments as a Star Wars fan is to truly feel just for a moment that I'm truly inside the galaxy far, far away. And that is a really beautiful thing. I really relate to that. Yeah, it is. I I can't wait to get back. I don't don't know when I'm going to be able to, but yeah, I can't wait to experience it again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the, the, one of the moments for me is on the, uh, the rise of the resistance ride. And I still don't want to spoil it if people are are going someday and haven't been on it. Uh, but uh, I, I'm a little spoiler obsessed Mm -hmm. all right that is it uh we had we had no questions pre-planned we had nothing but the thoughts the wonderful thoughts uh from anakin and lightspeed bear which is all we need because you uh your deep thoughts lead us to so many things that we want to talk about and share from uh how to keep going when life is difficult to the size of american hot dog wieners uh, I think we've covered it all. Any final thoughts, Ken? No, oh, lo- love, love doing this. Love hanging out with all of you and your deeper thoughts and experiences. Like Joseph said, it's it's a lot of fun. And you know, as we find our way forward right now uh, during the, um, the, the the strike times, which we hope end and end fast. But this is kind of one of the things we'll be focused on is the experiences of this uh, saga. And this was the first uh, great step out to focus on. Yeah, I really, really agree. So, uh, Ken, do you want to let people know where they can find us? I do. We are on Twitter at Force Center Pod. We are also on Threads at Force Center Pod, Instagram, YouTube as well. As we said before, we are close to launching, or we're close to launching, uh, Jedi Beat, the YouTube edition, Jennifer Landa's uh, series that she was taking from uh, earlier podcasts. We're talking almost nine years ago podcast here at Force Center and taking them uh, into a, a new uh, realm on YouTube uh, that's currently paused. The first episode's ready to go. We're just waiting for some clarification um, for Jennifer, who is a SAG member. Um, so hold on to that. But in the meantime, subscribe over on YouTube if you want to get more content there. Uh, you can get uh, merch at tpublic.com slash user slash Force Center. Our podcast is available wherever you can find podcasts. Just search and find us. And you can support us directly, which really helps us at patreon.com slash Force Center. You can follow me at Ken Napsuck or KenNapsuck.com for more information on other things I do, including my radio show, Pop Rock and Radio, or live comedy shows like the one Thursday night in San Diego at the American Comedy Company. Mark Ellison, friends, uh, Mike Black, old Force Center friend, Mike Black, just added to the show because someone, uh, uh, one of the other names had to drop out. So me, Jen Sturger, Ed Greer, who's amazing, Mike Black, Mark Ellis, giving uh, some uh, yuck yucks for y'all down in San Diego. Information and tickets on my website. Joseph, where can they find and follow you? 
Oh, well, you, you can uh, find me wishing I was at that comedy show, mm. either performing with you all or just watching. That is a great lineup. Uh, I love Ed and I love Mike. I love Jen. So that sounds fabulous. Uh, but I will be uh, busy with some other stuff, including uh, the short film uh, that I made starring Phil Lamar. It's called The Narrator. Uh, that is playing as a part of the Portland Festival of Cinema, Animation, and Technology, Portland, Oregon. If you're interested in more details, I'm posting about it on my social media, or you can go to their website, pdxfestofcinema.com. That is in August. Uh, I will keep uh, sharing details about that as it gets a little bit closer and uh, more short film stuff coming on the way. If you want to find me on social media, I'm on pretty much all the social media is at Joseph Scrimshaw. Uh, in particular, uh, Threads seems to be the heir apparent to Twitter. Uh, I posted something today about Threads kind of uh, being annoyed with Threads, and that is now my most popular post on Threads. So it's just <laughs> like Twitter, the absolute full Twitter experience. We're only here to complain about being here. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, I'm on threads too. And uh, yeah, well, I, I yeah, we'll give it. I, blue sky, I like blue sky, probably better than threads. No one's there. Threads, everyone's there, but I can't find them. I can't see them. It's uh, your tweet was uh, spot on, but we're there. We're both there. <laughs> blue sky is is very peaceful because it, 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 it does feel much like the actual sky. Then not, not many people up there. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, find us on whatever social media you want to try out. That is it for myself, for Ken, for Luke Skywalker finding himself again. This has been Force Center.